Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman and my friend Paige is back. How are you doing, Paige? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm okay. You don't have finals right now because you're on like a trimester system that they call quarters, even though there's three of them. Mm-hmm. Shh, that's okay. <laughs> Most people are getting ready for finals and uh, that comes with a little bit of stress. Uh, tell me about that. Oh, well, um, I mean, we have our finals in like two weeks, so <laughs> it's it's getting close. And um, I definitely have a lot of stress when it comes to finals because it's like, oh, I've been learning this for the past like for us, it'll be 10 weeks. And what if I don't remember any of it? What if I didn't study hard enough? Like what if I didn't then one of my classes, like I'm in a history class that's particularly challenging. And I'm like, what What if I don't remember any of this and I'm just gonna fail and everything's gonna be awful. But that's the stress part and anxiety. Like it's it's all, it's never as awful as your brain makes it out to be just because like you build up this final is like, oh no, what do I do? But yep, you've been doing it all semester. So <laughs> yeah, I'm really great at the catastrophizations too, but um just sort of saying, well, it it's not is going to be as bad as it is in your head. And that's there's still a, a broad, broad gap between as bad as it is in my head to actually good. So um how do we start to confront some of the stress that comes with this? Maybe uh bad ideas first. Mm, Bad ideas first. There's a lot of bad ideas. Um, The first one that I've always gotten told like, oh, if you're anxious, just cast all your anxieties on Jesus. That's what he's there for. And it's like, I appreciate that thought. I understand where you're going with it. But in my mind, that went from something that you meant as gospel to definitely a hard like law statement of oh no I'm anxious I must not be casting my anxieties on Jesus correctly right because this is actually sort of the, the definition of a law a law is something that you have to do a gospel is something that God does for you and so you can say cast all your anxieties on God but I don't have an off switch for them and so because I still have them clearly I'm not doing as good a job as as I am supposed to be because otherwise I wouldn't have them uh the, the problem is now that I've actually found uh my anxieties about being anxious um, and that it's just a vicious cycle. So instead of sort of talking about this as if there were an off switch and just like Jesus, and then there's no more problems. Instead, you get to recognize that when Jesus is actually saying, cast all your anxieties on me, he doesn't just sort of leave it there. Instead, he says, think about the birds, think about the fields, think about all of the things that I am taking care of that really probably shouldn't work. They can't even make clothes and yet they're clothed. They can't even store food and yet I feed them. It's not that you can shut your brain off. That's that's actually the problem with anxiety is you can't shut your brain off. So instead, he gives you something positive to focus your brain on. Instead, imagine the promises of God. Remember the promises of God and, and then start to apply them to you who he loves even more than the birds and the flowers and all the things in the field because um, it, it, you're right. Uh, your salvation doesn't depend on whether or not you get a good grade on your history class. Uh, you're right. It, it probably won't even be as, as bad as you think. And, and you're right. Jesus is there for your anxiety. But none of those things actually address the things that you're feeling unless you actually, well, hear them. Mm-hmm. Like, like the, the point of this is to have something else to fix your brain on. So instead we, we say, first, my salvation is secured. And so this is my everything right now, but in 10 years, it won't be, but in a hundred years and thousand years, my salvation is secured in Christ and, and more. He has promised to care about even the little things that don't matter at all because he loves us. And so I'm going to think about the places where he loves us. Yeah. Um, one thing that I know when I hear someone say like, cast all your anxieties on Jesus, I'm like, well, will you walk that with me? Like, Mm -hmm. hey, so we cast all your, okay, got it. So let's do this thing together. Let's take this from like this very law, like you must do this. I must be doing so much better because I'm telling you to do this to, hey, you're probably anxious too. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's go to the word. Let's go to Christ who we can can cast, we can pray. Exactly. And it, it just kind of flipped something that could very easily be taken as you must do this to, Hey, let's go do this. 
right? This is already done. Christ has already saved you. Christ has already promised to love you. And, this, and the prayer then is not like, well, you, you're cashing in some Jesus points for a better grade on your test, but, but rather it, it's a chance to reflect upon the fact that he has already made a lot of great promises, hasn't broken any of them. And so going into what feels like just a terrifying experience, you're not going in alone because, because while Christ has promised to care for even you in, in this, you have to, you have to, you have to think about it though. And that means being shown it, you're not going to go there on your own. So that this is what prayer is. It's a chance to contemplate upon the promises of God and, and recognize that um, you're joining yourself to something that has already given you a victory over way more than just a test. That's definitely for sure. And I know um, a lot of my friends, they'll be like, Hey, can I, can I pray with you? And it's like, sure. And then we don't know where to start with that prayer. Like, how do you, it's like, God, I'm anxious, please help. Like, is can that I, I mean that is can I, prayer, help? So. I mean it's yeah. true and that, that's not even a bad prayer uh there's something called a collect um it's, it's a really really handy way to pray that makes you sound like you know what you're doing i i, I lean on it a lot because i'm desperate to sound like i know what i'm doing uh but it's, it's it's a really really simple formula for for this when you're sort of stringing together a prayer you you think about the thing that that has you all up in arms and and go to your bible stories and you try and find a, a bible story or a verse that has something to do with it because then you know god cares about it enough to to address it in the book and he wants wants you to not only hear about it, but but contemplate it because it's it's in the book. It's good, uh, and, and then you you can uh, uh, you can ask for your petition, and so you, you'll address God. You'll you'll mention the thing that you know, and then you'll 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 make your petition. And then you close in the name of the Triune God. So if I'm God, I'm anxious. Help. We can say, Oh Lord God, you have promised to 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 care for even the sparrows of the field who cannot gather nor nor sow. I feel like I have no understanding of church history at all, and I'm pretty convinced that I'm going to do this wrong. But in the same way that you care for them, so too care for me. For you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And all of a sudden you sound halfway competent because you were reflecting upon God's word and promises. It's not even just that you found a trick to sound eloquent. It's that you're thinking about the things God has promised you. And that that's actually probably a good place to spend that mental energy when, when it's going hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you bring up the colic form because in my other class that we're doing, we're actually learning how to pray and the divine service and all that stuff in liturgics. So that's something that I can apply for that class for when we are asked to pray for then. I think I pray in two weeks in that class. And so that'll be helpful. There you go. It's a handy, handy trick. I would, I would hang on to it. What else do we kind of deal with when it comes to, to stress? How do we deal with stress when it comes to finals? Mm, well, don't self-isolate. That's mm. a really bad thing to do because then you're alone with you, you. yourself and your thoughts. And um, sometimes you need a little bit of downtime to be like, okay, I need to decompress, but don't go down that rabbit hole of, oh no, because then you just have that dread of no one's here. I'm alone. I So always reach out to your friends because they're going through the exact same thing that you're going through. We all have our finals week at the same time. We might not have them on the same day or the same hour, but we're, it's final season. So you can always lean on them. You can go to the word. You can go to your pastor. You can go to your teachers. You just don't feel like you have to go it alone because you're not alone. Right. And then the last thing I would say maybe is, is stretch time back out uh, because stress sort of compacts time. It, it makes it all just sort of in this one moment, this one thing. We get to stretch time back out by by sort of asking the questions that that impact eternity. Like, let's, let's start with that and then recognize if I fail this test, if it is every bit as bad as I actually think that it will be, can it put Jesus back in the tomb? All right, so eternity is okay. That then we can then if eternity is okay, we can go into how about a hundred years? In a hundred years, will will this likely make a major impact on my life? I I sort of doubt it. In in fifty, in twenty, in one, and you can work your way sort of back down to it and say, all right, so there's the the next couple of days I'm pretty nervous about, but things actually seem like they're going to level out past this. So I'm going to, I'm going to end those days where I am stressed. I'm going to, to pray and, and be rooted in God's promises. I'm going to be with the people that he has given me. And, and I'm going to go with the idea that, well, I've spent all semester learning this stuff. So um, I've spent all semester learning this stuff. Mm -hmm. You always know more than you think you do. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Paige, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Lord be with y'all on your finals. <laughs>